In sales, the general rule of thumb is that the more complex the product, the longer, the more winding, and the more complex the sales process has to be. And for some complex products, that might be true, but for others, we can close deals in a single phone call. That's all it takes to get a lot of deals done. I close complex training and consulting packages with some of the brightest companies in the world. And nine times out of 10, I do it with one single conversation. Yeah, I have one phone call with the prospect and then I send them an invoice and the deal is done. Most salespeople think this is impossible, but with the right step-by-step -step single call structure, you too can start closing deals quicker than ever before. Hi, my name is Will and I make selling simple. In today's video, we're gonna be covering the eight point framework that I use personally, and we train everyone inside Selling Made Simple Academy to use as well, to close deals with just one phone call. We're also gonna look at real word for word questions that you can ask prospects at each one of these stages in the process. So after watching this video, you can implement all of this right now, today. Now, step one, we're gonna look at pain. Is the prospect in any pain? Do they actually have a problem? Then we're gonna look at timeframes. What's the time frame for the prospect to implement the solution? And does it match up with what is right for your business as well? Then fit, can we actually help the prospect? Can we qualify them? Can we get the deal done with them? Then return, are they gonna see a return on investment from working with you? Next process. Does the prospect understand what it takes to get your product implemented and working within the company? Do they have the budget to pay it? Who is the champion, the person who's going to do a lot of this selling on your behalf? And finally, we're going to come to an agreement. We're going to close the deal at the end of this one diagnosis phone call. We've got a lot to cover today in this video, so let's get right into it. And the first thing to understand is that the business winning single phone call isn't a myth. It's not sales folklore and it isn't an old wives tale, but it is slightly misunderstood. See, you can't get any old buyer on the phone and close them in a single conversation. No, they've got to be the right buyer, someone that can actually get a deal done. They've got to be somewhat qualified for this process to work. And a recent survey from HubSpot found that the number one challenge for one out of three sales reps is qualification this big step at the beginning of the sales process. Qualification can be tough depending on how well you know the industry, how well you know the individual that you're selling to. That's why with this very diagnosis framework, we're gonna cover the pain that the prospect is in, we're gonna qualify them to see if we should be doing business with them, and then we're gonna close them in that order. That's the structure of the phone call. And most salespeople will go through this structure over multiple calls, multiple meetings, over multiple weeks or even months, but this framework, in one video right now is gonna show you how to do this in just one call and close the prospect at the end. So the very first step to all of this is pain. Because you need to answer the question, is the prospect actually in pain right now? Is the problem that you think that they have actually a problem? Because the buyers you wanna work with are the people who are feeling the hurt from the problem right now. And as a result, they're gonna be highly motivated to find the right solution and get a deal Done. And so a few questions that we need to ask at the top of our diagnosis calls are, hey, you brought this call into my diary today. What led you, what led you to getting this call booked in? This is a massively open-ended question. And usually if you've done this right, if you set everything else up perfectly, the prospect is gonna just spill, just throw up five to 10 minutes of just the troubles at you. And it's your job to start picking through these pain points and see which ones you can solve. Then to really solidify the pain, you wanna ask, hey, What's stopping you from solving this issue yourself? Both of these questions should help you get to the big problem that the prospect has and how you can help them when they're unable to solve the problem themselves. Next up, stage two, time. And this is important because not all problem and solution timelines are gonna line up. And one of your primary concerns when you're qualifying your prospects using this call framework is to understand what timeline that they're working to. What timeline do they need their problem solved within? Are they thinking, today, this quarter, or in five years from now? Because if your buyer doesn't have urgency, then they're not gonna be compelled to act. And as a result, you're likely to encounter plenty of feet dragging and time wasting, and they're just gonna be a real pain in your ass. So it's best to find out if they're not a good fit at the very beginning of the process. And the best qualifying question here is to say, hey, do you have a deadline to solve this problem? It's straightforward, I know, but the answer is gonna give you a clear, no bull timeline of what you're gonna do when you're gonna do it with the buyer. Next up, step three, we're gonna look at the fit. So 
You need to ask yourself at this point, can you actually solve the buyer's problem? Because the truth of the matter is that there's no perfect product or service for everyone. And if you say otherwise, well, you're just playing into the public's idea of just sales reps being slimy, uh, gross, manipulative people. Instead, it's your job to think of yourself as someone who offers value, who exchanges value with the prospect. And so you shouldn't have to waste time with someone that doesn't need what you're selling. It's terrible use of your time to spend time with someone who doesn't need what you're selling because chances are they're not going to buy at the end of the process anyway. So these qualifying questions are for you to ask yourself, not to ask the buyer directly. You want to ask yourself, hey, do I actually have the solution for this buyer's problem? And do they really need this solution? Because I would love a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. I could probably afford a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. But do I really need a Ferrari or a Lamborghini? Probably not, and so I'm not a good prospect to buy one. Not yet, anyway. Next up, step four, the return. And you've got to be realistic here because of the downside to purchasing any solution, even yours or mine. Buyers need to change vendors. They might have to hire new staff, train on novel new systems, or they've got to fight for budget within their own account. The question is, is the value of your solution higher than the discomfort that they're going to get from implementing it and making the purchase decision in the first instance? How much have they got to change to accommodate working with you? And when all is said and done, are they going to look back on this as an investment and a good purchase or something that just took up so many resources and didn't lead to what was promised in the first place? Going through this calculation upfront is a real must during this diagnosis call with the prospect. It's a great way of qualifying your leads as well. And to determine the ROI, we should be asking questions like, hey, how would things be different if we solved this for you? This is going to lead to benefits for the prospect that are not necessarily just financial, but hey, you're going to save me time, energy, we're going to reduce litigation. You're going to come up with a whole bunch of other benefits that you might not even realize until the prospect tells you that that's what they're looking for. Next, we're going to ask, hey, what is your motivation to make this happen? This is a similar question to this one where we're going to come up with perhaps some more intangible benefits for the prospect. And then finally, and this is a big one, if we took your business from X to X, and you see there's a dollar sign here, we're talking about revenue now. We're talking about numbers on a page, on a spreadsheet, as opposed to these intangible things like, I will feel happier, less stressed. We're talking about tangibles. How would that change things? This is an incredibly important question to ask because if you can't deliver some kind of solid, logical, analytical return on investment, then this is probably not a good prospect to do business with, both for you and your company that you represent and for the company that you're trying to sell into. These three questions are going to help you pass out whether the buyer is going to be willing to put in the effort needed to make this deal a success. And of course, what we're trying to elicit here is a strong ROI of we're going to do X and in return, we're going to get Y and Y is more valuable. That's what we're trying to conclude with these questions with the prospect on this call. Next, step five, we're going to look at process. Because as an expert on your product, you need to understand if the buyer knows how things are purchased within their organization. Do they know who needs to be involved in the purchase decision? Do they need to know what training needs to be done mid, during, and after the product implementation? What process do you need to follow internally within the account to get the deal done? Is there procurement? Is there a finance team? What, <laughs> what hoops, essentially, do you need to jump through. We need to get this documented so that once we go through each step, we can close each step by saying, hey, does it make sense to move on to the next one? And the deal moves forward very swiftly. And you can uncover these hoops very simply by asking, hey, when your organization has completed similar projects in the past, what has had to be done to make this happen. Of course, me selling medical devices to the NHS, nine times out of 10, it has to go through a procurement team. So I might add on to the end, hey, does procurement need to be involved with this purchase? And if you know your industry, your customers and your products and how they're implemented, you probably got a few things that you can add on to the end of this question as well, just to guide the prospect and help them narrow down their pathway to essentially success. This question is going to give you a real clear idea of what lies ahead should the buyer be a reasonable fit and they tick all of the other boxes. Step six, and we're really rocking and rolling here. We're now moving on to budget and this can be a touchy salespeople who are uncomfortable talking about money and prospects who haven't perhaps done these deals in the past. But, but, but it's absolutely essential that you get a feel for your buyer's budget before you move forward with this 
process. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to lead the call with questions about money. And in fact, if you start the call by hounding your prospect about budget, well, it makes everything about you and it's a selfish sales process. What we're trying to do here is add value to the prospect throughout this diagnosis call so we can make a big ask at the end of it. So we're gonna ask about budget here. And think of this as just another simple step in the qualification process. There's nothing weird about it. You're just asking about numbers that are on a spreadsheet. If it's a big company, a public company, these numbers are out there for everyone to see. So don't feel weird about asking about budgets. We're gonna ask questions like, hey, how are projects like this funded? Is a project like this in this year's budget? What financial scope do you have to solve this issue? I like to use this one because it's open-ended. Our training program, Salamain Simple Academy, is a fixed price. It's been a bit fixed price for years now. So there's no discounts, the price is the price. But understanding the wider scope of the budget allows you to communicate more effectively with the prospect. If they've got 200 grand of training budget for their sales team this year, and it's gonna cost them 150 to work with us, then this makes it an absolute no brainer. I don't need to adjust my pricing to get it up to that 200 mark. I don't need to do anything weird with it. And when I ask this question, hey, what financial scope do you have to solve this issue? And they're open and honest with their pricing. I can be open and honest with mine as well. And this leads us up to step number seven, an incredibly important one. And this gets more and more important depending on the size of the organization and the size of the deal that you're selling. We're gonna look at the champion. Because in a B2B complex sale, your buyer's decision is often gonna be influenced by other individuals within the business. It could be heads of other departments, higher ups in the C-suite, or even an influential team member that's below them but has been in the company for 25 years since it was originally founded. That's why it's so important to figure out who these other individuals are, or we call them champions, before you declare that your buyer is a fit and before you try to close them. When you identify these champions, you're gonna work out whether the person you're speaking to is the final decision maker, if there's someone else you should be speaking to, and if there is someone else you should be speaking to, they should be either in on this call or you should be doing this call with them to one call close them, as opposed to one call closing this random schmuck that you've ended up on the phone with. And the easiest question to ask to elicit this information from the prospect is, hey, who is the person that people turn to within your department on projects like this? We're not going above the person that we're speaking to on the phone. We don't want to piss them off. We're not going below them. We're not going to the one side or the other. We're not making assumptions. We're just assertively asking, hey, who is the person that people turn to for projects like this? This. this subtle approach is going to help you uncover any other decision makers that may be influencing the deal without you seeing them influencing it, which is obviously probably not a good position for you to be in. And once you've been through every one of these steps, we move on to the final step, which is the agreement. As a sales professional, it's up to you now to get your buyer's verbal commitment on the call. Do not leave the call without doing this step. Otherwise, the whole thing's gonna fall apart. Otherwise, they're liable to walk away after weeks, days, months of your hard work trying to get this call in the diary in the first place. So if you have determined that your buyer is a real lead for you, you've gotta ask one of these questions. Hey, you're a good fit to work with us. If we can solve X, will you commit to Y? And if we can solve X, will you commit to Y? Could be anything. So in this example here, if you need to do a demo before the deal gets done. So for me, medical device sales, I would one call close and then do a demo and then send an invoice, right? And so the end of the call, the agreement phase would look like this. Hey, you look like a good fit for us. Does it make sense to book a demo for tomorrow morning? When I'm selling our consulting and training services over at Salesman.org and the Seller Made Simple Academy, it could be, hey, if we can solve the lack of growth in your organization or your money back within the next 30 days, does it make sense to get the contract signed today? It's as simple as that, but you've got to ask this question. This time-tested formula right here, it has it all. It's got validation, it's got a hint of flattery, results anchoring, and a whole lot more to it as well. By asking this question, you're tying your solution to a specific result that the buyer wants. And equally importantly, you're influencing the buyer to commit to the solution provided that you can achieve the results that you've promised them. After that, the only thing to do is to get the contracts done, get the paperwork done, and the deal is done as well. So no matter how complex your product is, how many moving parts there is in your solution, it is possible to win business on a single call when you use this diagnosis framework from inside Seller Made Simple Academy. All it takes is asking the right questions at the right time, in the right process, qualify the prospect, and then close them at 
the end. So we're going to jump on the call. We're going to identify the buyer's pain, the timeframes. We're going to ask ourselves, are they a good fit to work with us? We're then going to identify the return on investment that we can give them. We're going to look at their process. Do they know how to get this deal done? Do they know how to implement it? Can they do all the work themselves? Do they have the budget? Are they the champion? And then finally, we're going to get the agreement of if we do X, you will do Y. If we get that, the deal is as good as done. So take this framework, start using it today, start asking these questions in this order. The order is very specifically put together and you're going to start closing deals, big, small, complex, super complex with a single phone call in days rather than weeks, months, or years. And if you enjoyed this video, why not click the video that's on the screen right now and continue making selling simple.